Titanic, Boilers and Carbonals. From the video channel at www.mitadelmed.it. This video seeks to illustrate in a simple and clear way the steam production system on the Royal Mail steamer Titanic. On the Titanic were installed 29 flame pipe cylindrical boilers, known as Scottish boilers, with a total of 159 furnaces. All the complex was virtually below the floating line. The boilers were distributed in six compartments numbered from the engine room. Were powered by coal and had a working pressure of 215 pounds per square inch. The coal for the supply of ovens was stored in the carbonals, which, starting from the walls, developed almost halfway across the ship and were supplied through the carbonate ores on the sides of the ship. On the sky of the carbonals there were gas spills while inside the tubes for temperature sensing were inserted. In a carbonyl, to the right towards the bow, there developed a combustion principle. These inconveniences were faced by closing the carbonyl to stop air from the combustion, controlling the temperatures, injecting steam from the bottom, and, if not enough, entering, from the bottom, seawater. Some claim that this incident has led to a weakening of the structures, contributing to the loss of the ship. A significant entry of seawater from the compartment had been reported. Maybe there's a simpler explanation. The Titanic, like all ships under the helm, rotated around a point about a third of its length from the bow. In our case the ship has moved to the left but enlarging to the right. In this bend the Titanic was pushing more and more against the iceberg, bearing in mind that after the bow the hull expanded. Probably the waterways realized at the height of the fifth compartment were particularly extensive. Now let's go out of the carbonals and let's see how the boilers were made. On board there were five with one front and twenty-four with two fronts. On the front of each boiler there were three ovens. Boilers of this type were basically made up of an oven, a firebox, a tube bundle and a smoking case connected to the chimney. This is a boiler with two fronts. This is a boiler where you see the smoke box. Lower down there are the three ovens with their respective loading doors, the ash drainage ports and two steps for the internal visit. Here, after removing the smoke box, you see the pipe plates and the heads of the tie rods. Here we enter the boiler and see the pipes leaving the fireplace and the ovens from which the doors have been removed. This is a steam pickup valve for cylindrical boilers of the type installed on the Titanic. Two pickup valves must be fitted on each boiler, which are, of course, located in the upper part where the steam is collected. The arrows indicate the input and output paths of the steam. Each boiler must be equipped with two feed valves to reintroduce water that is output in the form of steam. The feed pump pushes the water from the bottom and when the pressure exceeds that of the boiler, the valve rises and allows the passage of the water. As soon as the alternative pump stops pushing the valve closes, the amount of water is controlled by the stoker that manually moves on the hand wheel by properly adjusting the stroke of the valve. 
in the cylindrical boilers of the type installed on the Titanic. The valves were placed one on each side above the ovens. The water level in the boiler is very important. Hot parts must never be discovered to avoid serious damage. An important moment that requires the greatest commitment by the stokers is when, in maneuver, but even more so in the event of an emergency. There are strong changes in the steam demand from the engine room. In the case of the Titanic, this situation was particularly severe when the sudden stopping of the ship was requested. These are safety valves to prevent boiler pressure from exceeding the boiler's resistance limits. They consist of valves held in place by springs. The safety valves open automatically. If somewhere you read that they are open to ship's personnel, someone tells you lies. Now we just have to see how the coal burns in ovens with particular reference to the Titanic. Steam production is closely related to combustion activity, which in turn depends on the amount of air that is fed into the hearth. The air movement through the fireplace and the subsequent ducts takes the name of drain. Titanic installed a force drain system with closed chambers. Powerful fans vented air from the outside and fed it into the boiler rooms that were hermetically sealed. So the only way to get out was through the boiler booths he came through the ash doors under the ovens. The stokers, acting on the degree of openness of these doors, as well as on the amount of coal on the grids, regulated the combustion activity in the production of steam or boiler pressure. If you want to know more about the Titanic and its model, and many other ships, visit the site www.mitadelmer.it.